There were two things that I thought shine bright on Saturday night. Did not mean to rhyme, but there were two things that, that stood <laughs> yes, out. Yes, you did. And I think you agree with me on what stood out the most on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. The three-point shootout. Yeah. And then the three-point showdown between Steph Curry and Sabrina Ionescu. Yep. And that is where, like, looking back, when we found out that Steph Curry and Sabrina Ionescu were going to go head-to-head in a three-point shootout a month ago when this was announced, I just thought, okay, what what are we doing here? What is, what is What's going on? I thought that it guaranteed Steph an all-star spot because he wouldn't just show up for a Saturday night event. And Steph was going to be an all-star, even though the Warriors aren't one of the better teams in the West this season. He's Steph Curry's going to be at an all-star game. But what I failed to realize and just really appreciated so much was how that event came off. It was not gimmicky. It was a close competition. And in a setting where we talk about competition and people caring, you actually did have both cheering for each other. And a lot of times that stuff can be corny. I thought this was genuine and a genuine competition. And honestly, to have Steph win it and put himself, like it's, to me, it's the perfect ending. Not that Sabrina Ionescu had to lose, but Steph Curry really had the most to lose if you were to look at it in that situation of what is this a gimmick? How are you trying to do this? This seems to just be some fake way to get people interested in this and that. I thought it was really put well put together. I thought it was put on well. And I just think that Steph Curry deserves a ton of co- credit because it doesn't work without him. Yeah, so before All-Star Weekend and this came out, uh, you had taken, I think, the Sunday off. So I did According to Monsi with Aaron Torres and George Reister. And I... Okay, I was traveling that day. I did not take the day off. All right, let's get it straight here. I was traveling uh, because I did this show with you the prior day. And it was on my way to the Super Bowl for nine days in Las Vegas. Can I say taking the day off is not a bad thing, Dan? It's okay. It wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't supposed to be a, a diss, all right? I'm just saying you were not here that day. And so on According to Monty, I said, I was like, it's really hard to dislike Steph Curry or something like that. And I was like, because he's going into a situation where I thought it was kind of lose-lose for him. Because I just thought, okay, if he wins... People are going to come out and be like, why did you have to go beat a girl like that? Why did you have to show off, right? If he loses, you lost to a girl. Well, maybe you're not as good as people are saying you are. I really thought a lose-lose for him, but I was so happy that he was still willing to do that because not a lot of players would be willing to possibly lose to a girl, right, on the national stage of basketball. And so I was giving him already a lot of credit for doing it. Then the actual event happens, and it's better than I thought. I thought it was a win-win in a way that I wasn't expecting or anticipating. Win because Steph won. Steph, to me, is like the greatest shooter. It's impossible. Just you see it. It's it's amazing. And Sabrina Ionescu, we already knew, was a great shooter. And how did it come out as a win for her? She scored as much as the guys did during the three-point shooting contest. Like an actual win-win where... Prior to the event, I didn't see that as a win-win situation, you know? So I agree. It was not gimmicky. You can tell that they both cared about it and that they both wanted to win for their own reasons. But you know Steph was sitting on there. When she hit 26, he was like, oh, goodness. I actually have to. And and his last ball was the difference maker. The difference maker. And he missed in the middle of that. He missed a few in a row where it was at the end. He had to put it together. And it just showed how great he is. You know what I mean? To yeah. to hit the last rack, how great she is shooting from the men's three-point line, which I, you know, I don't know if I would reach that as many. Like, maybe I could get a couple, Yeah, but I might be exhausted by the end of rack two where I'm not even hitting the rim. And Kenny Smith made his comments afterwards. That, you know, we talked a little bit about it yesterday. I don't think it's worth diving into now because I still don't even know what Kenny Smith was trying to say. Right. But in the end, he came out kind of discrediting some of, of what did just appeared before all, before all of our eyes that we are saying, wow, this was pretty cool. I also think that this sets up – if 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 it was Dame Lillard in this event – it's not the same. Now, maybe Dame Lillard next year, you know, he's going to try to three-peat in the three-point shootout since he went back-to-back, but you carry it on. But the first one you have to do is you have to get the stars out there. Mm-hmm. 
Coming up in, you know, within the next week or so, there's going to be another golf capital one, the match, and it's going to feature a couple LPGA stars and, and, and PGA tour stars. So you have men and women going against each other, but this is like the, you know, the 10th or 11th different version of doing this. Mm -hmm. It started out with Tiger Woods against Phil Mickelson. You need that to launch this. And if you had any other NBA star, it does not carry the value that having the greatest shooter that the game has ever seen in that moment. And that is why, like, it needed Steph Curry. And as you said, he had everything to lose. He was in a lose-lose situation. And somehow, in the end, he comes out a winner. And 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 just in not just in the competition, but of 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 the grand scheme of things, this will happen next year. This one, and guess what? If it is Dame Lillard in the competition against Sabrina Unescu or Caitlin Clark, mm-hmm. if she goes to the WNBA, like now it's become a must see event. It was a hundred times better than the skills competition, yeah, and it provides provides more drama than a dunk contest did, and it would it went. Toe to toe, and if it may have outlasted, because Dame went down to the wire as well and hit some big shots at the end that helped him win that competition. But it was just something that that really could have come off as a gimmick, is hokey, and it actually was a grand slam home run. And what you just said, Steph needed to be the first one to do it. Perfect example of what's happened to the slam dunk contest, where stars are not doing it anymore. And look at it now. No disrespect at all to Jaime Hacquez Jr. Yes, awesome that you were there. But there are no all-stars. We had one, Jalen Brown, who put on a white glove, and I was supposed to be impressed that he dunked with his left hand. Like, what? What are we doing? Good job, Steph Curry, for doing this against Sabrina Ionescu. You're right. Now, now others will be inclined to do it. Other big names will be inclined to do it. And it might be the beginning of something bigger. Jalen Brown, if you are going to be a star, and he, I think he, I think his scores, not that we're breaking down the scoring, but his scores were much higher than the dunks that he actually had to do. No if you're going to do it, like bring, bring something to the table. Like something these were, of these creativity. Just, yeah, that's that's the point. It's not just only lending your name to it; it's also providing the end because the 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 dunks and the acrobats that you want from these guys. Like we've seen LeBron do crazy dunks in games, and we're like, imagine what he would do in a in a free form setting like a dunk competition and yeah it's just it's it's not there anymore and guys used to do it the greats of the game used to do it like is you know kobe was in it before that obviously we know jordan and dominique wilkins and clyde drexler and those guys were at the top of their games Mm -hmm. when they were doing this sort of stuff and it just doesn't it doesn't carry it doesn't carry that weight anymore maybe this is the new way and you know what if it helps the wmba and makes bigger stars out of them yeah even better awesome yeah Yeah. that that, that, that's awesome and maybe that's the, the the way that it goes and it's it's just the fact of steph curry put his neck on the line and he's the only one that fit that suit to be able to play that role and he came through with shining colors. Yeah, I'm telling you, I was so pleasantly surprised with how it went from beginning to end and that it was just also one round. Like, they didn't stretch it out. No. They, it, it, you know what I'm saying? We weren't there like, okay, speed this up, like I was during the skills contest. I was like, are we done here? Can we move on to the next thing? It was, it was perfectly executed from beginning to end. I loved it. I really did. I enjoyed it.